up? It's the MMA analyst here to do my preview for UFC 126, headlined by Vitor Belfort and Anderson Silva. It's gonna be a great fight. Let's get right down to it. Dang, this is gonna be a good one. What we've got, obviously, we've got Anderson Silva facing his first actual striker. Dan Henderson's not a striker. Um, Forrest Griffin is far from a striker. Oh, he strikes, but he's not a striker. And he'll be facing for the first time in the UFC truly somebody. I'm not 205 who's a James Irvin. Come on, let's go. Let's be serious. Somebody who actually has a very uh, solid level and foundation in striking. Somebody who will have likely hand speed advantage. And uh, somebody who's got good head movement. Somebody who can hit hard. Somebody who can put it all together. We're talking about Vitor Belfort. Um, damn, I'm right in it already. On the other hand, Vitor Belfort will be facing same thing. Somebody he has never faced before. Or at least, uh, or at least recently has not faced a striker like Anderson Silva. Somebody who's got the angles. Somebody who has the precision. Head movement. Feet work, the footwork, everything. Just this is going to be really what I believe a very entertaining and technical fight for as long as it lasts. Anderson Silva obviously is the man at 185. He's probably top 10 at 205. I mean, he's crazy. He's coming off of the Submission of the night, crazy comeback victory over Charles Sonnen. Uh, he had that thing that happened with Damian Maya, still a win. Absolute destruction and embarrassment of Forrest Griffin. Then that other thing with Talis Latis, still a win. Then a kind of thing which was still a win over Patrick Cote. Then beat down of James Irving. Uh, rear naked choke of Dan Henderson, broken nose, Rich Franklin, TKO Nate Marquardt, came back from some ugliness against Fat Travis Luter at the time, and won his championship title for the first time back in 2006 against Rich Franklin, broke his nose the first time, and before that, shut Chris Lieben up, who actually told Anderson Silva to go back to Japan and fight where the competition is easier. That is what Anderson Silva has done in the UFC, undefeated since June 2008, uh, June 2006, and on a massive tear. Uh, Vitor Belfort, I'm just going to do, you know, I try and keep it real, you know, I try and keep it real. And I see the Vitor Belfort situation, and I see that the um, Alistair Overeem situation, and I find it kind of funny how people don't hold the same standards if you're not in the UFC. Uh, Vitor Belfort was at heavyweight. He was at light heavyweight. He recently, and by recent I mean 2006, uh, 2009, debuted, or 2008, he debuted at 185. Let me change something real quick. I think, let me. A little bit of an angle switch. I didn't do much. All right. Anyways, he debuted at two th in two thousand eight in, J in July um, at one eighty five against unranked Terry Martin, and he knocked him out. Good win. Then in, in January at Affliction, the second event, he fought against Matt Linland at one eighty five. Matt Linlin also unranked at the time. Then he came to the UFC and he fought Rich Franklin at 195, which is catch weight, 10 pounds above 185, 10 pounds below 205. So he hasn't fought in the UFC at all in the 185 division. Beats him very nicely, by the way. And then gets injured, has not fought since September 2009. 
Just for you guys who want to know, that's a year and a half. Has not fought, or at least that's how long it'll be. Roughly a year and a half since fighting in 2009. And he gets the title shot. And people are pretty much sure that based on the skill set that Vitor Belfort is showing, he is going to be a tough fight for damn near anybody. And many would put him in the... Well, at least they would like to rank him in the top 10. And I think many sites have him ranked in the top 10. Based on skill set alone... And a win over Rich Franklin, who was unranked at the time, at 185. Rich Franklin, by the way, at the time he had faced him, was coming off of a win over Vanderlei Silva, unranked. Dan Henderson at light heavyweight. Matt Hamill at light heavyweight. Travis Luter. So the last time he fought, somebody ranked at 185 was Anderson Silva in 2007. And Vitor Belfort defeated him two years later. So I'm just saying the way that things, the double standard there. Uh-oh, guys, go go crazy. The double standard for UFC and non-UFC fighters when you have somebody like Overeem, who has been smashing people, but hasn't faced the top guys, but is showing the skill set likely needed to defeat a lot of top guys, but people want to say ABC about him. Anyways, moving on. Rant over. Vitor Belfort has not fought in a year and a half. He has been injured. Since Vitor Belfort last fought, Anderson Silva has fought twice. And there were two very tough, solid fights. Two wins. Um, and that's the big difference I see here. Other than the fact that Anderson Silva is still the superior striker. I see this fight going like this. Anderson Silva does not go where the, his opponent's strengths are. That's it. If you're on the ground and, and you're going on the ground jujitsu, crazy jujitsu, and you just can't deal with him on the feet, he will stay on the feet no matter what. He'll dance on you and do all types of stuff. In this fight here, Vitor Belfort's strength is striking. He's a counter striker, and Anderson Silva has proven that he is the most patient fighter. In the UFC, when it comes to F your game plan, you've got to do what I want you to do. Anderson Silva is not going to take steps forward. It's not going to happen. Vitor Belfort is going to have to take step for, st steps forward. When Vitor Belfort is taking these steps forward, Anderson is going to be moving side to side. He's not these amateur fighters that, and by amateur I mean strikers who back up straight up. Oh no, I'm getting hit and just run backwards. Side to side. He's going to be using angles. Vitor Belfort has got hand speed, yes. But when he uses this hand speed, it's more or less in, 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 in. And the hip. he'll throw a whole bunch when he's got you rocked. But he's not the kind of guy that's going to come at you like. <laughs> and if he is, he's going to, Anderson Silva's going to step to the side and counter. Step to the side, counter. What I see is Anderson Silva against his first formidable stand-up opponent showing not only how good he really is, but also his ego and cockiness showing up even in this fight where he should not do dumb stuff like put his hands down and, 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 and egg him on. I think he thinks that he's good enough and I think he is good enough to actually go out there, do his thing, and then start moving around and actually doing his thing against somebody who is dangerous on the feet, not somebody like Forrest Griffin, not somebody like Rich Franklin, who they know how to punch, but somebody like Vitor Belfort, who if he does hit you, will knock you out. And I think that he is going to be willing to put it on the line and do his thing even against uh, uh, Vitor Belfort. I don't think he's going to do it right away. He's going to have to open up. But when he opens up and when Vitor Belfort starts coming forward, Anderson, I think, will shine. It will be, I'm hoping, it will end up being an absolutely amazing uh, performance. Um, and I'm going with Anderson Silva by uh, third round TKO. Forrest Griffin against Rich Franklin. This one's pretty easy for me. Um, yes, Forrest Griffin defeated Shogun. Asterix, bracket, 
whole explanation. If you don't know, that's fine. If you want to ignore, also fine. Yes, he defeated Rampage Jackson and became the light heavyweight champion. Asterix. Bracket. Put all the information. If you don't know, that's cool. If you do know and you don't believe, that's fine. But the reality is Forrest Griffin is pretty much okay at everything. He's okay. His ground game, he's okay. They say he's um, on the ground, you know, he, he's underrated. Sure, whatever. Put him up against somebody who isn't underrated, who actually is rated and ranked on the ground, he'll get smashed. Um, on the feet, he might be less than okay. He likes to brawl. He doesn't have the knockout power. He's very sloppy. I don't know if you can see me if this light's effing this up. Nothing I can do about it. It is what it is. But, again, he's okay. And what I give Forrest Griffin mad respect for is being, at best, okay in all areas and still finding a way to beat Shogun, still finding a way to beat Rampage, still finding a way to win tough, still finding a way to be well, to have been relevant. That's what I give him props for. Would I ask him, f would I go to a seminar for striking from Forrest Griffin or for submission wrestling or for wrestling or for any of that? No. But that's what he does. He survives. He he gets other people to, to fight at a lesser potential and then he defeats them. If you want to hate, you can hate. Rich Franklin, he's better on the feet. He, on the ground, I mean, Forrest Griffin's probably best chance is to try and get the fight to the ground. Um, how he's going to get the fight to the ground, I'm not sure. Is he going to try and go for takedowns? Is that what Forrest Griffin does? No. He didn't even do it against Anderson. He's going to stay on the feet. Forrest Griffin is going to be sloppy with his strikes. Rich Franklin is going to have far better striking. Even though he's not an amazing striker, he will have far better striking. I'm picking Rich Franklin to be able to not get hurt by whatever he does get hit by and end up winning this fight um, by a third round TKO or a decision where basically he goes completely unscathed and if he is scathed, then it won't be like he got hurt or rocked. It might just be he was in a really exciting fight and maybe got a, another bloody nose or a black eye or something like that. I think this, by the way, is going to be a very exciting night of fights. Up next, I'm going to jump to Ryan Bader, John Jones. Good Lord. This should be quick. Ryan Bader is not as good as as John Jones in anything. Anything. He has a win over uh, Antonio Hagerio Noguera, where Noguera, who is known for not having good takedown defense, was shucking takedown defenses like nothing. Guys, coming at him, get off me. It's coming at him, I mean, really, I think Noguera won that fight. It doesn't matter. The point is, Ryan Bader's stand-up, he's got very sloppy stand-up, and throws fastball, pitch, overhand punches. Very wild. Hitting people with the inside of here. That kind of stuff. He defeated Keith Jardine. That's cool. Eric Schaefer. That's cool. Uh, Carmelo Marrero. Vinny Magal has. He's improving, but he's not improving at nearly close to the rate that John Jones is, is, is improving. John Jones... We saw what he did to Matt Hamill with ease and then ended up losing because of technicality. We saw what he did to Jake O'Brien with absolute ease. Uh, Stefan Bonner was really when he had his coming out party where if you look at the difference between what he looked like against Stefan Bonner and what he looked like against Brandon Vera, Matt Hamill, and Vladimir Matashenko, it's out of control. He is literally wrecking people. Matashenko gets down gets inside control, and just unleashes elbows. It's over. Brandon Vera, one elbow, breaks his eye, just cracks his orbital bone. Brandon Vera is creaming, holding his eye. Matt Hamill, 90 un 
uh, uh, undefended strikes, just nonstop, bam, 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 elbows, punches, and then he goes one, two, three. They stop the fight. They give him the loss. Look, I'm not gonna go any further into this. John Jones is way better than Ryan Bader right now, and I might even say that even right now, Ryan Bader, uh, John Jones is better than Ryan Bader will ever be. I don't think. Ryan Bader is going to become a good striker, ever. I don't think he's going to have amazing cardio, ever. I don't think he's ever going to be the champion. I do think John Jones will be the champion one day. It is what it is. John Jones is going to outstrike him. He's going to take him down if he wants. Ryan Bader can win this fight if the fight somehow stays on the feet and Ryan Bader somehow manages to hit him with one of his fastballs. If... Other than that, I mean, it's just not going down. John Jones should get a very easy, and not because Ryan Bader is not a good fighter, but because John Jones is so much better, win over Ryan Bader. Up next, Car- Carlos Eduardo Roca against Jake Ellenberger. Uh, Roca has a, a nice win over Chris McCray. Chris McCray took him down. Uh, Roca got up. Chris McCray took him down. Roca. Went for, reversed it, went for a knee bar, went for a rear naked choke, went for a knee bar, caught him, fights over. He's undefeated. He's fought a lot. Uh, He's fought the rest of his career actually in uh, Germany. And now he's facing Jake Ellenberger. Jake Ellenberger is coming off of a win over John Howard and Mike Pyle. Before that, he has a loss to Carlos Condit. And uh, he's a pretty well-rounded fighter. 15 knockouts, 5 submissions, 28 fights altogether. He's lost 5 times. Jay Heron, Delson Heleno, some tough guys. Anyways, Jake Ellenberger is not going to go for the takedown. And I don't know if Roca is going to be able to get Jake Ellenberger to the ground. If he is, then it'll be very interesting. But Jake Ellenberger is still pretty decent on the ground. I think this fight stands on the stays on the feet. I think Ellenberger outstrikes him. Um, it could be a very good fight. I don't see it being a um, like a walk for either guy. I think it will be a, a tough fight, but I do see Jake Ellenberger coming off uh, away with the victory. Miguel Torres against uh, Antonio Benuelos. This is basically, um, I mean, they gave him the Charlie Valencia softball. He you know, did fine. Um, and now he's they're stepping up the competition again. But Antonio Benuelos just isn't on the same level as Miguel Torres. And by that, I just mean Miguel Torres is better. Not that Miguel Torres is on any type of serious pound-for-pound pound whatever level. Just, again, trying to keep it real, he's fought his first 30 fights in Hammond, Indiana between the years 2000 and 2000... Seven. If you go on Wikipedia, and I know there are some red names on Wikipedia that, you know, are solid, but still. We're talking about 135 in the year 2000, 2001, 2002, all in America. Facing all Americans. It's not a deep talent pool. He went to the WEC in his second fight, got the title shot, defeated Chase Beebe. Good win. Uh, Yoshihiro Maeda, good win. Mandy Tapia, good win. Um, Mizugaki, good win. So at that point, he is 4-0 and against good fighters. Like, you know. And then he loses to Brian Bowles and he loses to Joseph Benavides. Now he's 4-2 and against some of the best in the world. Then he defeats Valencia, who's not on the level. And now he's fighting Benuelos. I'm just saying... I'm just trying to put out like a little bit of the hype needles to to pop those hype bubbles. You know what I mean? Anyways, Miguel Torres should be able to get this win. Um, ben Wellos coming off of a win over Chad George. Um, he has a split with uh, with Scott Jorgensen. Um, he lost the last time they fought. Um, Eighteen and six. Again, um, it, it should be a somewhat competitive fight. Until Miguel Torres turns it up. He's just trying to get back into a comfort zone that he felt when he was very com- when he was very confident. Um, 
once he does get back into that zone, I do believe that there are only a few guys that can defeat him. Maybe five guys on any given night. Uh, so he is still very good. Please don't get me wrong. I'm just saying. Um, it is what it is. Preliminary card, Donald Cerrone. I'm picking him over Paul Kelly. This will be a big test for Donald Cerrone. And really, for a lot of the guys in WEC, we've seen what's been happening with them coming over to the UFC and fighting um, gatekeeper-type guys from the UFC. They've been having some troubles. Um, but I am picking Donald Cerrone over Paul Kelly. Michihiro Omagawa is coming back to the UFC in the weight class he should have been fighting in all along. Um, he's been handling his business. He will be taking on Chad Mendez. I'm picking Omagawa. They brought Gabe Rudiger back again. Paul Taylor against Gabe Rudiger. Um, he got destroyed, I think it was against Cole Miller. Um, I mean, Joe Lozon. Destroyed against Joe Lozon. I always get them confused for some reason. Um, but it was a late replacement fight. The UFC is respecting that, giving him another chance against Paul Taylor. I'm going to pick Paul Taylor. Uh, damn, Kid Yamamoto in the UFC. Yo, man, it must be rough in Japan for Kid Yamamoto to be in the UFC. And it must be rough for Kid Yamamoto, for Kid Yamamoto to be in the UFC. Not too long ago, he was basically... The Vanderlei Silva to the UFC's Chuck Liddell. He was the Fedor to the UFC. Oh, never mind, that don't count. He was the whoever was in Japan's best guy to, against who at the time was um, California Kid. Uriah Faber. But he's had some little bit of tough times. He's coming to the UFC. He's fighting uh, Demetrius Johnson, um, who I think will be a very tough fight for him. Demetrius Johnson is big. You know, I mean, they're all the same weight class and they're small, but he's big. I'm going to be pulling for Kid Yamamoto. It's just he hasn't been looking the same. He's got some injuries. Um, he lost the fight to Joe Warren. Then he lost the fight to Kenahara. He defeated Federico Lopez, but that is uh, what it is. And uh, damn, it's going to be a tough one. He's going to have to deal with a, a very big opponent, somebody who's going to look bigger than him. He's got great wrestling. I'm talking about Yamamoto. He's got good hands. If he has that confidence that I was talking about, the, the confidence that he had, the explosiveness, all of that stuff, then he should be able to do well and win. If not... Damn, he's going to come to the UFC, he's going to lose, and I'm going to have to hear a whole lot of doo-doo brown about it. Kyle Kinsbury, Ricardo Romero, I'm picking Ricardo Romero. Mike Pierce, I'm taking him over Kenny Robertson. Overall, I think it's going to be a good fight. Frick, 24 minutes? Son of a biatch. MMA, it's important. I ain't doing this again, peace.